Ah, uh, we're ready. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> wow, that thing this is, is supposedly gonna like save you, but it's like it's like this air horn has asthma. I, mean, I hit the thing and it's like, <laughs> I'm at, what? The dog? That's just gonna tell the dog where you're at. Yeah. It's I like guess. come over here and bite me. <laughs> Does it scare the dog away? I don't know. It didn't scare. I mean, do you run with it? Well, not anymore because it doesn't work. Oh, but at some point, but I do have a bear spray. I run with the bear spray, but that one Dang. time I almost got attacked by those dogs that live three quarters of a mile from my house. I haven't seen them again. So funny story today. Nice neighbors. I got here. Yes. And so, you know, I'm doing my little Stu Smith workout, which is no, which is not nothing ever. Even when you're off, you're not. And so I'm running down the road. What I've learned, Stu, is when you say do like four half mile intervals, do yeah. not run out a quarter mile and then run home a quarter mile because then you're tempted to be like, well, I could be done. What you have to do is run out a mile and then run back a mile to get in your four. So I, I like that method. Yeah, it's 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 like the time I ran 13 miles in my driveway, you know, just to torture myself. Remember when I did that? on the private road, you were like, yeah. Hey, I'll run with you. And like, I ran past my house 50 times, tempted Oof. to quit. So I digress. So here's the thing I'm running and it starts raining and I'm like, okay, well I'll just run faster because it's raining. So here comes my neighbor, right? Mm, drives past me. I'm like, Hey, you know, I'm running. So he gets about hundred meters down and then he stops. I'm like, Oh, something wrong. Then he backs up and he comes back. He's like, Hey man, you need a ride? And I'm like, Shh. I appreciate that. Thank you. So <laughs> I stood there talking to him for five minutes, getting uh. wet when I could have gotten home. But I didn't want to be rude because he was so nice to offer me a ride. And it was just, it was funny, yeah. I guess, when I told him to take Running in the rain. Running in the rain. Running in the rain is fun. Stu. Yes. Dude. You're a big fan of 80s action movies, right? I am. You are, because we grew up then, you know, Rocky, yeah. Rambo, all of, them. all of them, Navy SEALs, you know, Charlie Sheen, all that stuff. Okay. What do all of those movies have in common? They have a soundtrack. Cool soundtrack, right. They got a cool theme. Yeah. So, Stu, I got us <laughs> a soundtrack for our show. Are you ready? I want to hear it. I may or may, depending on the comments that come in, buenos dias, everybody. Depending on the comments that come in, I might let the whole thing play or not. Okay. So here we go. This is the Jim and Stu cool sh show theme. Even in the city at midnight, the danger starts to rise. <laughs> Two heroes on a mission, they're ready for the fight. Ready to fight. With laser guns and leather jackets, they're the talk of the town. Jim and Stu, unstoppable, the best around. They got the knowledge and the skills, they're the masters of the game. Teaching business owners how to level up their fame. Yeah. Using genie powered AI, they'll show you the way to get the leads and sales and make your dreams come true today. Welcome to the Jim and Stu Show, where business meets fantasy. We'll teach you how to conquer in a world that's AI-friendly. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to play the whole thing, but uh, that's kind of cool, right? That actually was not was the cool. one I wanted to play. <laughs> that was the big band uh, that's Jim That's the one Stu. you sent me. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's not quite the action movie one. Yes. But then I started thinking to myself, hey, what if we could make like a cool like music video about the genie? So I started playing around with this. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but everything that I'm going to show we generated with somebody says needs more bass. <laughs> okay. He's, he's not wrong. Okay. So I'm just going to share this one. I'm starting to try and make a video. Everything's AI generated in this. Okay. So this is kind of fun. I'm not going to play the whole thing. Got no words to write, got no stories to tell. 
Well, I got something that's gonna change your game. An AIG that'll make you a star in no time fame. Full the genie of words, he's got the magic touch. He'll write your sales copy and make you way too much. No more late nights, no more stressing out. Just sit back, relax, and watch the sales go in. No doubt, the genie's got algorithms, he's got all the tricks. He knows exactly what to say to make the buyer click. He'll craft your marketing campaigns, make them shine so bright with his words. You'll be the talk of the town every single night. Full on the genie of words, he's got the... Okay, so that's kind of cool, right? <laughs> I have to say, that is really cool. So anyway, I've been, that's, I've been messing around with that. And uh, I'll be I'll be explaining how we're doing that kind of stuff. I'm trying to to integrate the genies and have it spit out some cool stuff. But um, I've been making jingles and and all kinds of of stuff. So um, I love every oh it needs more cowbell. You guys are killing me. Um, <laughs> so anyway, it's fun, right? I like it. I like and it. it's and it's different and it's creative and it's unique and I think that's one of the things that we all need to again that's the thing we've been stressing that soul that's a kind of uniqueness that could help you uh, and I think you know again that's something who here would be interested in knowing how to put something like that together like lickety split having a genie that would do that for you or a genie that would assist you in doing it so that it wasn't just slightly above average, but it was amazing. Um, and you know, the funny thing is that that little video that I started to show you there, I actually put that together in about 12 minutes. Damn. So it didn't take, it didn't take that long to do. Um, but it was a lot of fun and it was a lot of, it was just it was just neat I, I had a good time with it yeah sometimes you can go down you know just experimenting with things that you find online and it wind up being really productive time right you in know? fact that makes me think of an acronym that we could play with because most of the cool things that i've ever figured out have been when I've been playing around. Now, I play around with the genies and stuff all the time. I mean, just playing around, seeing what I can make it do, all that kind of stuff. But if we were going to use our human intelligence to come up with an acronym for play, I'll go first, Stu. Productive. <laughs> I'm going to steal yours. Okay. Mm. Productive. Okay. What would be your L if we're coming up with play to, to figure out cool stuff? You can ask the, the genie chat. Uh, the group maybe can help me with this one. There you go. Um, productive. How about uh, limitless? Okay. Uh, I don't know. I guess this isn't really going anywhere. <laughs> my 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 human intelligence isn't as nimble as it used to be for making this stuff up. Um anyway, I just I I agree. You know, sometimes just playing around with something and running down a little bit of a rabbit hole is kind of fun. Well, I say we use the acronym genie, Jim. See what it comes up with. Uh, I guess we'll have to do that. Let's do that. <laughs> it's it's bothering me that much. <laughs> All right. Well, we were and we still are going to talk about the authority site, Genie. But let's run over to the uh, Genies. We'll do the acronym Genie. And uh, OK, so our word is P-L-A-Y. And style of content, we'll do Entrepreneur Magazine. Angle would be inspiring. Reading level, beginner. Who's our avatar? Entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Use the experience of play to come up with really cool and innovative ideas in your business. 
have fun while creating new solutions to existing problems. All right. I don't even type anymore. Do you ever watch the Sean Ryan podcast? Oh, yeah. You should go watch episode 62. Uh, Who's on saying? it? Um, some dude talking about AI and how it's basically going to problem solving, laughing, adventure, yielding. Hmm. Problem stands for keys to put under approach, channel the mindset of play, tap into creativity, L's for laughing, incorporating fun and humor, A, adventure, exploration and discovery, yielding, experience for yield, fresh ideas and perspective. That's not bad. I like that one. You know what I thought of leisure? Because you're kind of just hanging out with your computer, you know, just leisurely, you know, hunting and pecking around the internet. So one Doesn't of the things really feel like work. Right. And that's a great, I like that. And let me, let, let's expand on that for just a second. So, you know, when you have, I've, I've been researching a lot lately and really reading on where good ideas come from and why ideas do or don't show up. And I have discovered something. I've rediscovered something. And I, I'll tell you a quick story. When I was a little kid, I read a lot because I was kind of a sickly kid and we didn't have cable. So if you're a sickly kid and you don't have cable, you read books or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I read these books back in the day called the Great Brain Series. I don't know if you ever read those, but they were about a kid. They were true story. Kid wrote about his brother who was really, really smart, called the Great Brain. They always got into trouble and other stuff like that. And I think the guy's name was John Fitzgerald. Um, anyway, one of the things that I always remember, the kid, the really smart kid, his brother, I think his name was Tom, he said, I figure stuff out the night before I put all the stuff into my brain and then I go to sleep and when I wake up, I have the answer. And that struck me as a kid, like, yeah, you know, that's kind of how it works. And so if you want to come up with really cool ideas, because I've been working on new genies and figuring out how to do stuff. Um, what you do is you immerse yourself in the issue, but you don't call it a problem. You just immerse yourself in the issue, all the different parts. Think about the process, think about the players, think about the parts, all that stuff, all right? And you figure out, okay, also, what's the solution that I'm trying to create on the other side? What does the payoff, what am I trying to create? But don't be attached to the, the how, just be attached to the what. And then what you do is nothing. <laughs> Once you've gotten really clear on all that stuff, you got to, on all this and all that, you got to let it go. I call it subconscious cooking or subconscious marinating. I call they it got, back burner. There you go. Back burner thinking. Exactly. Yep. And then all of a sudden, usually when you're doing your Stu Smith workout, Okay, yeah. the light bulb is going to go off and it's going to start pouring out of you. Yes, the answer is going to come and it's not going to come in drips and drabs. It's going to come like a band of a hurricane. And so you got to be ready to capture it. So I capture the stuff by I have the Otter app on my phone. If I'm out running, then I'll just vomit it into the Otter app, everything. And I'll say it as many different ways as I can to just get it all out. Downstairs in the uh, World Headquarters gym, I'm on the executive level right now. I'm up here in the <laughs> World Headquarters executive level. I can see the executive uh, washroom and the uh, Unicorn Cafe over there. But I Sweets. exactly the uh, executive suite. Downstairs, though, I have set up in the gym a giant freaking flip chart 
with all the markers and stuff. And I'm all the time writing stuff because it'll come in the middle of working out, man. It just comes. And I start off, you know, I just start drawing everything out. And and this is how you solve problems. This is how you get those ideas. And when you're playing, I mean, I think of working out unless it's PT test day, then a serious business. Um, I think of working out like playing and stuff that when you're when your mind is relaxed and you've loaded everything in, it'll spit everything out the solution to your problem. So that's yeah. how I do it. You know, yeah, I, I do the same thing. In fact, sometimes my wife will say, what are you thinking about? So, cause it's, sometimes it's like starting to like go from back burner to front burner. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Ter Terry's like, what do you, yeah, she does the same. What are you thinking? About? Cause I'm like sitting there like this, like in my own little world, just thinking and stuff like hits me like a palsy or something. <laughs> um, but, Anyway, that wasn't what we'd intended on talking about, but it's kind of fun. Oh, that came because we were playing around with doing like the little theme music and stuff. Right. Hey, I, I want to share something with you. Uh, uh -huh. For those of you who just saw the acronym Genie for the first time, uh -huh. let me let me share real quickly a great way to use that. Two, two ways. Okay. One, write an article with an acronym in it, you know, and use it as part of the title, something catchy. Um, two, if you have to give a quick speech for some reason, right? And you don't want to have to be looking at your note cards, hit an acronym of your speech and boom, 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 boom. It just flows perfectly. So I, I've been using these techniques for some of my, you know, junior officers I'm coaching, you know, who have to give presentations and mission briefs and all this stuff and just, you know, helping them with their public speaking. And that has been a huge help for for me just as a technique to get people over the hump sometimes. What is the um in there? A, there's a specific type of brief that you give that's got its own acronym. I know there's an OODA loop. We've talked about that before, but what's the, what's the one like they learn it in ranger school or whatever that I'm sure it's not just ranger school, but it's a, it's a way to give a sit rep or something that that's like a, it's an acronym for anyway. I will look into that. I, I don't remember what our mission briefs were, if they okay. had an acronym to it or not. Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, cool. Well, Stu, let's time back in and yeah. let's talk about, uh, one other, you know, if we're just giving updates and stuff, <laughs> um, something that Susan and I are working on right now, that's really exciting. Uh, that's going to be, we're, we're first going to lay it out to the mastermind group. Then we're going to make it available to the elite level. But, uh, back in the day, we made a course called mini site creator. And it was a step by step by step by step course on how to create the four main types of mini sites, which now you would call funnel sales letter, opt in or slash newsletter, an affiliate bridge, and basically about me. Okay. And that's, that's, those would be your mini sites. Sure. So over the years, it changed, morphed became mini site creator version 2.0 w wp mini site creator well we decided that this is something that everybody in our universe needs now with all the stuff that we're pumping out from copying content.ai everything from sales letters to blog posts to all that other stuff and um we're right in the middle of getting it all done but all of those steps all of that we are now recreating in today's world with modern funnel builders. And so I'm really excited because it's going to help people to to kind of it's that it's that last mile type thing of hey you created your sales letter copy inside of copying content now how do you quickly get that into an actual funnel while you where you can actually sell people stuff. And so we're we're putting all of those tutorials together to show step by step by step how to do that within uh, Funnel Builder. So that's pretty cool. Sweet. It's a lot of work. I'd forgotten how much work it was last time. 
<laughs> but it's going to pay off in spades. And the thing that's kind of cool about it was that what really started the business back in the day, you know, what kind of put us on the path of where we got here today was me teaching Susan how to make websites. That was the whole mini site creator thing. It was like, I'm going to teach Susan how to make sites the way I want them made. And if you want, you can attend the class too. That's That was the gist of the whole thing. And the reason why we sold it was to make the money, to put the money in the bank, to pay her salary the first year. Now we fast forward 20 some odd years and Susan's teaching me how to build the websites in the funnel builder. Nice. So it's kind of a cool, it's kind of neat Nice. how that went. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, speaking of websites, we want to talk for a minute about an authority site building authority sites and Stu, probably the number one question that you should ask is hey jim what's an authority site yes jim tell us now you gotta ask come on oh man. what's an authority site Stu, i'm glad you asked let me explain what an authority site is i'm gonna take the whole screen up here for just a second but don't mute yourself or anything but basically the difference between an authority site and a funnel, okay? Let's start with the funnel. The purpose of a funnel is to get people to take a specific action. And it's usually just one action, but certainly one action per step in the funnel. And it's basically to get people to buy, to try, to click, to sign up, or to call on the phone or to do a Zoom meeting. That's basically all you can do with a funnel, especially a particular step in a funnel. Because you might have something where, you know, in the start of the funnel, the only thing you wanted to do is buy. But then as they progress through the funnel, maybe one of the one-time offers, it might be to get them to actually sign up or sign up for a call. So, but thinking about each step, there's only one yes, no thing you want them to do. An authority site, so the intention, that's important, that word, intention. So the intention is to get them to take this step. Now, if we look at an authority site, what is the intention behind an authority site? It is to establish yourself as the expert. The expert. And also to showcase your stuff whatever your stuff is so in the case of Stu, if you go to stewsmithfitness.com that's got a lot of stuff but on that site you know who Stu is you know what Stu does you know who Stu serves you <laughs> who Stu serves you know what Stu sells you know it, it's the who what where when why and how of Stu of anybody and how to contact him. So some people would say, oh, that sounds just like a website. Mm, sure. If you want to think back to the original intention of websites was kind of like to establish your little home on the internet and nobody was really doing funnels. Nobody was, you know, people were just starting to do one page sales letters and stuff. But the intention of this site is not just to throw all your crap out but it is to establish your home on the internet that shows you as an expert in a specific field. Interestingly, today we're publishing an article in the newsletter that talks about how I lost out by not having one of these. And so you can refer to the newsletter today on that. But the bottom line is that these are to get people to take action. That's for the funnel. But the authority site is really for when people, for lack of a better term, when they're going to stalk you, <laughs> they're going to go online and they're going to look at their computer and they want to know everything they can know about you before they might hire you or do business with you or they see you mentioned somewhere. Great example. My buddy Stu who's now my friend. We've been in business together in one way, shape or form now, I think for about 10 years coming yeah. up on, if not longer than that. 
And I saw some, but I was online looking for how to, to be able to do more pull-ups. And I saw somebody in a Go Ruck group talking about how Stu Smith helped him get ready for a Go Ruck Heavy. I went and did some research on Stu Smith and I found his website and I saw that he'd written a bunch of books and I'm like, I don't want to buy a book. I wonder if the dude does coaching. And I looked and Stu had his online PT club. It's like 300 bucks a month or something like that. And so I said to myself, I better get my wife's permission. So I remember I walked out and I found she was working in the garden and I put a sales job on her of why I should be able to hire this Navy SEAL dude to coach me to get into better shape. And she's like, yeah, yeah, whatever you want to do. So I went and signed up on Stu's authority site. And within five minutes, I had not heard from Stu. He had not called me. He had not sent me a customized workout. So I'm, I, I still remember, I call him, I'm like, ah, let's see if he really answers his phone. He answers his phone. I'm like, Hey, Steve, my name I just signed up for your PT club. And then, uh, when are we going to get started? He's like, I'll send you a questionnaire, dude, calm down. And I remember that. And that's like 12, 12 years ago or more. And anyway, point is that Stu's authority site, the fact that he had a site where a chucklehead like me could go and find out everything there was to know about Planet Stu. And now, 12 years later, look where we are. How many times have people not been able to find you because you didn't have anywhere for them to find you? Another startling admission. So, and this is something that I'm like, I'm preaching the choir now because we're in the middle of setting up my authority site finally at jimedwards.com. Good. Yeah, it's about time. So three weeks ago, get a call. Hey, company, got millions of users thinking about wanting to talk to you about copying content.ai and integrating with what they've got going on. I'm like, oh, holy crap, because Jim knows how to do math. Millions of users, even if they'd only pay me a couple bucks per user per month, eh, that beats Chick-fil-A, right? So they're like, where should we tell them to go look? And I'm like, oh, crap, it's 1997 all over again. Because <laughs> that's what I write about in my sales, in, my, in the newsletter. Bottom line, I had to tell them, hey, okay, if you want to read my bio, go read the bio over on Amazon. If you want to know more about me, you want to check out my book, Copywriting Secrets. You can go to copyingcontent.ai and see this is the big thing that we're working on. All the time I'm thinking, man, I really sound like a chucklehead because I should just say, hey, go to jimedwards.com and there you go. <sighs> so I think it'll still be okay that they'll still talk to me, but I'm, you know. So did you uh, have a problem getting jimedwards.com or you already had? Oh, if you want to pay enough money, you don't, you don't have a problem getting any website you want. Somebody had your jimedwards.com? Yeah, some jackalope named Wong Wee or something over in some idiot's, idiotistan or whatever grabbed it when some dude named Jim Edwards in England, who was also a, um, a writer, he bought it. He had it before me. He was a writer back in the 90s and early 2000s and then he just let it go i'm like mm -hmm. what and then you know wong we bought it and been raising the price every year you should have done and jim so, edwards dot ai well i did grab that oh okay okay but having your own dot com oh, you know yeah. your name your dot com thing so anyway it cost uh, me four grand to get the thing finally i caved in terry's like would you stop because i jerked around on this for like five years it wasn't a knee jerk thing. And in five years ago, I could have had it for a couple grand. Then I made the mistake of calling to see if they'd take less. And they were like, oh, we got a chucklehead who's going to buy this. They're like, what's your name? And I'm like, Jim, Jim Edwards. Edwards. <laughs> they're like, okay, dummy, we'll wait. <laughs> and so they raised the price. So there yeah. you go. What's anyway. wrong with Jim Edwards' method? I like that one. It's I got it's fine, not, dude. Not the but same. Not, not the, same. the same. All right. You know? So anyway, bottom line, got it. We're building it out. The cool thing, it it's just cool how like you know stuff comes full circle. 
we're making the videos to do the train everybody on how to set up their uh, authority site by setting up my authority site and using the genies and using the tools and stuff. Um, so one of the things, you know, that we're showing everybody is doing the, um, using the authority site genie, which writes all the stuff for your site. We've done a demo of this before, but if y'all haven't seen this before, and I mean, it's, you know, this is my actual project. This is me burning the thing, hitting build, and then creating the homepage, creating the about us, creating the mission statement, creating the vision statement, creating the contact, connect with us, all that stuff. And the products and services. And then it writes it all based on all your goodies. And then let me open up and then you obviously you can get results. You can download this. And so I downloaded it and this isn't, I, it just generated it again, mm -hmm. but I had the one that we did. Uh, and this is, this is after I went through and did a quick edit job on it. it took me about 20 minutes to edit everything. And so then this is what's becoming the actual jimedwards.com, nice. which, which will be finished today. So this is kind of cool cool. pictures, graphics, videos. Well, funny enough, Stu, um, we talk about that. I went and got a bunch of pictures taken and the pictures haven't shown up yet. So we're keeping it kind of minimalist right now. You know, we got the good little picture of me and i'm just showing at a minimum what you should have on there and then we can add stuff as we go um one of the things i would love to add that i think we should add um would be like some videos of me speaking from stage maybe that video when i spoke at funnel hacking live back in 2019 that everybody says makes them cry and um, you know, just some other stuff. So we'll come up with some highlight reels. But here's the thing. When you're setting up your authority site, what's what's the minimum that you should have? Maybe we'd talk about that for a second. What would be the minimum that you should have on there? And the cool thing is that the Site Genie makes it for you. But at a minimum, you got to have your home page. You got to have your About Me page. You got to have your mission you got to have your contact us and then you got to have basically products and services. Okay. Yep. So at a minimum, that's what you need. Now, the cool thing is that if you've got all that, then you can pretty much get all that done in a day. Once you establish it, then you can add more stuff. Like what's, what's another thing, you know, you could, you could add a book me to speak, you know, put me on your stage. So yeah, book podcast Jim. link. Um, right. Yeah. So newsletter, yeah, sign up for newsletter. And so that's going to be the next thing that we put on there is some sort of a, just a newsletter offer. And, and that would be, the easiest thing that actually would be the easiest thing to do. That's what we should do, Susan, because then I don't even have to uh, come up with any kind of a, a um, opt in bribe or anything. Just they go into Gen, Gen Pop. But see, the thing is, if I don't set up the site, all this other stuff just kind of never gets done. And so if you think of this like we call it an authority site or an authority hub, but if you think about a hub, You've got the hub in the middle, which is your basic or your basic pages that you need to have. Each one of the hubs, each one is like a spoke on the wheel. So you can add additional spokes, you know, so you could add like your book and then a course, and then maybe, I don't know, video links yeah links to specific videos but but now you've got the thing set up 
The one thing that you got to be careful of, though, is to organize it in such a way that it doesn't become unwieldy. Mm -hmm. So meaning you think about it like a hierarchy of the organization, you know, you're going to have your main organization, your main pages and stuff. So the about me stuff, and then underneath it, you might have sub stuff. So a sub thing of about me by like, you know, book gym or, you know, that kind of stuff. So you just don't want to end up with a website with like, has, <laughs> says the person who has a website with a hundred links on the left inside of copying content, but on your <laughs> hub site, you want it to be kind of organized so that it's a logical progression. There are people smarter than me that know the words and stuff on that. But anyway, start with the basic, get it done, then add stuff to it. But I think that, you know, this thing that we've been talking about with soul and with you, why that's so important. I think this is going to be more and more important that you got to have your hub where that you own because if you think about what facebook and twitter and even linkedin all of them want to replace little parts that used to be part of your website you had to have a website you had to have a blog well now instead of having your blog and then having people subscribe to your RSS feed. Remember when people said that because of RSS feeds, email was done. Yeah. People would just be able to, you know, subscribe to an RSS feed, and yeah, that turned out to be BS. Um, but you know, Facebook is basically a micro blog. You put something up, you don't have to maintain the website, and Facebook promises that you might get some people to show up. Well, I had people that subscribed to my RSS feed. I had people that subscribed to my blog. I had people that paid attention to my stuff. But now Facebook's like, oh, you don't have to worry about that software. You just put this in the thing, hit the button, and and we'll just, we'll take care of it for you. What you don't realize is that they'll t by taking care of it, what they mean is they own it. Mm. They can do whatever they want with your stuff. Show it, not show it. You know, on my blog, my stuff shows to everybody. On there, they don't necessarily have to show it to everybody. That's a good point. LinkedIn, their big push right now is is you should go on LinkedIn and really they're they're rewarding people who are using the blogging feature. Okay, that's that's the big thing right now. Well, that's because LinkedIn knows that people it's the the trend. Everybody wants to read longer content now, or they're trying to get people to do that. So instead of you going back and just posting on your blog, they want you to use LinkedIn as your blog. And you might be able to get some additional people to look at your thing. If you're doing and you play nicely and you don't piss us off, we might show your blog post to people. So, so really what it is, is that they're promising you, with the promise of potentially having an audience that you don't have to work that hard for, we get to own all your crap and control all your crap. But Eh, kind of the the monster hiding in the closet is oh but if you piss us off we won't show your stuff if you really piss us off we'll kick you off and you don't own those customers and you don't really have a way even if you have a relationship with them if we cut you off we'll just substitute somebody else so if you're smart you got your own central thing where the super fans can find you. If Facebook is down, if LinkedIn is down, if Twitter's down, if YouTube is down, they, they can find you, the super fans. And the super fans are really what you want anyway. You don't want the people who are just casually interested. You wanted the people, you want the people who are super fans. Like if everything went to crap, I know that I could go to stewsmithfitness.com and I could communicate with Stu. If I went down, where would you go? Well, some people might go to copying content. Some people might go to the Jim Edwards method. Some people, you know, that that's, it, it's not as clear cut and it needs to be because they're coming for you, Stu. Put that, t put that tinfoil hat on, man. They're coming. <laughs> All right. So 
that's that's why you need an authority site. That's why you start with the basic pages that the genie can make for you, real lickety split, and they're good. They're totally customized to what you need done. And then you can add. Now, some people might say, well, would I link to my funnels from my authority site? Absolutely, I would. I would have any any stuff that you got for sale that you have a long form sales letter, I would either link from here or I would have a version of it on there. Also, this is where you can give yourself the credence on an individual funnel where let's say you tell somebody, hey, I sell this on my website every single day for 197 bucks, but you can buy it right here, right now for 97. Well, where are you going to sell it for 197 bucks every single day so that you could point to that and say, hey, you can buy it here for 97 or you, any day you can go over there and pay twice as much. You got to have it somewhere. So this is where you can list that stuff. Anyway, <coughs> that's an authority site. That's, where, that's why you need one. That's what should be on it. That's how it should be structured. Should also be nice and simple. Yeah, that there looks simple. Do we have any questions or issues? And and I think another thing that that is coming along, somebody just said I'm setting up a community on my new site. I think that's something as well that is worth a look. I know there are different softwares or different different things that you can use to set up your own Facebook style community. Um and I, I'm not sure that's not a bad idea. Or I'm not sure that's not an amazing idea or isn't. Whatever. I'm using too many double negatives. Worth looking at. <laughs> Especially if you've got a topic that Facebook or somebody might one day consider tabut. <laughs> where they don't, you know, they don't like it, you know? No, for real. Yeah. You got to start thinking about this stuff. In my meditation this morning, Stu, where I sit quietly, I, I wrote something down I wanted to share with you. And that was um, cause things to get done. Don't necessarily have to do them yourself. See the whole board. And that was that whole thing. I need to start thinking more strategically than just, you know, nose on the grindstone thing. You know, just seeing the whole board, seeing what's yeah. happening. You know, the 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 big tech companies have too much control over us. You know, and look at what we're doing right now. We're going through StreamYard, but we're showing up on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, and my website. If one of them chots us up at the knees, you can still see us on the website. Got some redundancy. Right. And I think, and that, and the whole reason why we even started using this was to be able to broadcast directly to the website yeah. because of what happened with getting thrown into Facebook jail, you know, through no fault of our own. They didn't catch me for the crimes I did commit. They punished me for something I didn't do. Yeah. It was something very strange, like an administrative issue or something like it that. was. No, I started doing a, I started doing a right. broadcast from my yeah. phone on one IP address. And then the right. IP address switched when I switched from my home thing to the um, cellular network. Right. And they're like, Oh no. So yeah, I think it was my chicken's fault. Mm. So, Anyway, that's what I got for today, Stu. What else you got? Any other thoughts or any things on? Um, no, I was. Um, I, I had a productive weekend this weekend. You, you did. Know, I, what I had did to you go. Do? I had to go to a fitness conference. You, you know, when you have a certification or qualification, you have to get some continuing education yeah, credits. That's why, that's why I don't do those kinds of things. You know, I I like it for what I what I do with fitness and insurance and all of that. So. And it's a good certification. Um, but anyway, I went and listened to eight speakers talk. And I went in there for some reason with a much better mindset than I normally have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Normally, I'm just there, like, get this over with. You know, it's my Saturday. Can somebody just... sign my paper so yeah. I can get my continuing yeah. education credits? Yeah, I got to go. Let me just pay and go. <laughs> but I was there the whole time. I, a couple friends were speaking. I wanted to say hi to them and things like that. So it was, I was going to be there the whole time. But I went in with a different attitude. And I said, you know what? I bet somebody is going to be talking about a topic that I want to also talk about. Yeah. You know, or write about. So I actually took pages and pages of notes on all these topics. And I wound up finding, and then I made a list, 15 article topics in the next, you know, few months that I can, uh, write about and that they're varying everything from fitness to coaching leadership nutrition okay and uh it was it was nice it was a nice little diverse uh way of going into it you know just open-minded and stuff so there you go that was my lesson for the week that's very cool now are you going to use some of those topics with the genies to help you uh get some stuff done lickety split Probably will, especially some of the things that I'm not that well versed in. Definitely okay. help. I've already used the genie to help with a concluding paragraph for an article I wrote yesterday. Okay. And then, yeah, so I, I've been using, you know, I, I tend to write articles a lot, of, you know, the old fashioned way often, you know, just because I, I like to do it that way. <laughs> but there are times when I need something in the middle or I need something at the end. Yeah, And so I'll use like the paragraph genie or I'll use the acronym genie. Yeah. Add some content in there and yeah. I'll use a paragraph genie again for a little concluding paragraph. And it yeah. works so well. I'm doing the same thing. When, and this is something we could talk about on genie hacking as well. But I've been doing a lot lately with stories. I mean, really focusing in telling a good story. And then I use the genie as kind of the, I mean, it's good stuff, but it's it like the fill in or the, or the, uh, you know, Hey, this is where I would get, I would tell like five things to do or the other stuff like that. Right. So it's like, okay, just give me the five things to do. I do a quick edit pass on it, but it's like, because it's my story that starts the thing, like in the, in the newsletter today, I tell the story of, um, when I was a mortgage broker and, and my loan processor basically telling me to get my ass out the door and get some loans in because if this office didn't was depending on me and she didn't, she was a single mom and she was not going to lose her job. And so just telling the story of that stress and then the, the realization of what I needed to do, man, it's a cool story. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, okay. And now after I tell the story, here's, you know, bit, 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 this, this, it's almost like, and I, I'm not busting on the, the AI in any way, shape or form, but the AI in and of itself is, is not going to cut it. You've got to have a piece of you in there. And so whether the piece of you is a story or wow, Stu just must've hit the wrong button. He'll be back. So whether that, the, the piece of you is a story or talking about something that, uh, sorry, Jim, what did you hit the wrong button? I did. Okay. It's like he hit the wrong button. He'll be back. Um, But whether that piece of you is a story or your opinion or a unique experience that you had or a unique perspective or just talking about lessons that you've learned, it's it's not you by yourself and it's not the AI by yourself, but it's like this cyborg approach is what is really working well. And the neat thing is that the way we can dial in with the genies with everything from the tone to the writing style, to the perspective, to the focus, to all these different things that we can just dial it in so well. And it's all based around the avatars, the person you're talking to anyway, that AI content is not slightly above average as you might get with just a chat bot, but it's real laser focused. So you can put it right up there with your own human intelligence stuff with the stuff that it does, put it together and you got something super extra cool. That would be about stuff. Maybe you don't know a ton about on that one, you know, in, in that one little aspect. So it complements rather than trying to replace you. Hope that, that makes, makes sense. sense. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, 
So cool. Well, that's all I got, Stu. I would just encourage everybody, if you're not a member of copyingcontent.ai, you should be. Uh, on June 1st, our intention is to double the price. So if you're a member and you're getting ready to hit renewal, might want to stick with us because we got even more cool stuff happening. And if you're not a member yet, you will be. So you might as well get it now for this price instead of paying twice as much after June 1st. And cool stuff happening with the with the website builder instruction stuff. Um, you know, just just here's the thing you need to understand. Copycontent.ai is not just an AI tool. This is not just something where you may, oh, do I want to use Claude, their chatbot, or do I want to use OpenAI's chatbot, or do I want to use Google's chatbot, or do I want to use Zuckerbutt's redheaded chatbot, or or the chatbot? It, we ain't a chatbot, okay? We got Genie Chat in there, but copycontent.ai, if you want somebody to help you actually get a result, that's what we're all about. We're the AI plus the training, plus the experience, plus the community. That's where you're going to get the result. Any idiot can type into a chat bot. Go down to the library of Internet Cafe. You'll see idiots typing in the chat bot. You want to get a result? Copycontent.ai is your only choice. Stu, I'll give you the final word. Um, Jim, thanks for having me on, as always. Always learn a lot You know, whenever I am part of your video hour <laughs> the jim and Stu show yes all right um, well, we... another, another thing i've been using uh just to close it up is um have you tried a, another version of ai and that's the grammarly ai option have, you, have I... you seen that little green one that pops up now no i have grammarly but i yeah. have not messed around with their ai i think maybe maybe, a, maybe maybe an update or something i'm not sure you might want to update your grammarly because okay. normally you know it, it corrects your sentences and all that stuff and gives you ideas but yeah. now it's giving you an option for a whole paragraph rewrite wow and it's it's pretty clean it's pretty clean i probably use it you know maybe 30 percent of the time but it's 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 pretty fun so are you so you're are you using that so you're taking the genie output yep. and then you're running that through grammarly yep and i've done that before but this is something different yeah this you're is saying now, yeah something new. Okay. yeah it just adds it's another option then you can dismiss it or you can add it to your it, it'll replace that paragraph with not only corrected but a different angle of saying it okay so i mean if if we're gonna cheat on our 11th grade English paper, we're really going to freaking cheat on this thing. Good Lord. It, it makes me such a good writer. Like other day, I didn't, some reason Grammarly wasn't on. Yeah. And and my editors over at military.com said, hey, are you done with this article? <laughs> Ooh, okay. I'm like, hey, go, let me check. Oh, no, I guess not. I need to clean this up a little bit. Yeah, well, there's also yeah. the make sure you send the right file because Nancy's this morning, she's like, hey, uh, I was looking at next week's article and uh, I think I'm going to have to, you know, do a little bit with it. And I'm like, what? And she's like, yeah, it's got this and this. It's got like this other side. That's not what I meant to send you. And I was like, did you did it look like this? Just no, that's not what I got. I said, oh, crap. So. In the end, you got to use that human intelligence to send the correct file. You know, that's where where did I save this so I'm sending the right thing? You know, that's, that's, a good that's point. 1990s problem. Speaking of articles, I like this one you sent today. Oh, thanks. It's really good. Check it out, folks. I appreciate that. It's good. Uh, it's good work. Awesome. All right. Everybody have a great day and we'll see you next time.